Tom Brady has truly put football fans on a roller coaster ride over the last several months with his will he or won't he retirement saga. First he calls it quit, then he comes back, then his coach walks away. If you've been following all the twists and turns, you might think that something about the story just feels a little bit off. Well, it just doesn't add up. Some new reporting is shedding additional light on the whole Brady affair. And this reporting lays out one of the wildest conspiracy theories to come out of the sports world in quite some time. A trio of reports in recent days say that the seven-time Super Bowl champion was trying to engineer his way off of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and onto the Miami Dolphins. The plan was that Brady was not only going to play quarterback for the Dolphins, he was also going to be given a top front office position and a minority ownership stake in the team. But the reports say that the Machiavellian maneuvering was thwarted after former Miami head coach Brian Flores sued the Dolphins and the NFL, alleging racial discrimination, which led to his dismissal. The bombshell lawsuit, which included provocative allegations against Dolphins owner Stephen Ross, reportedly made the whole situation just too volatile for Brady to push forward, especially since former New Orleans coach Sean Payton was going to be brought in to coach the team, according to the reports. Dolphins owner Ross decided he did not want the optics of replacing Flores with a white head coach while facing a racial discrimination suit. And so the plans were scuttled, leading Brady to unretire and rejoin the Bucks. Now, this all gets a little bit complicated. So we put together a timeline so, so you can follow along because there's so many weird steps to this. The sequence of events started on January 25th when Sean Payton resigned as coach of the Saints, where he was the head man for 15 years. Payton and Tom Brady have the same agent and they're thought to have a very strong relationship which goes back decades. Brady wanted an established veteran coach like Payton in place before making the move to Miami. Then we move to a key day in this drive Drama, that is February 1st. In an Instagram post that morning, Brady announced his decision to retire from the NFL. But as noted by Ben Volan of the Boston Globe, one of the three reporters who broke this story, the legendary QB intentionally did not use the word retire. Quote, he said, I have always believed the sport of football is an all-in proposition. If a 100% competitive commitment is not there, you won't succeed. This is difficult for me to write, but here it goes. I am not going to make that commitment anymore. It was a very deliberate choice of words there, Volan reports, and it did not include the word retire. But later that day, Brian Flores filed his lawsuit against the Dolphins and the NFL, which changed everything for Stephen Ross and Tom Brady. Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio, a regular guest on Dan Abrams Live, reported that the Dolphins planned to introduce Brady as a minority owner of the Dolphins the very next week, with the plan being that the Dolphins would eventually make a trade with Tampa Bay to secure Brady's playing rights. But the Flores lawsuit, it put a stop to all of that. Now you fast forward to March 12th. Brady reportedly traveled to the UK to watch a Manchester United soccer match. Manchester United just happens to be owned by the Glazer family, which also owns the Tampa Bay Bucks. And lo and behold, the next day, Brady ended his 40-day long retirement and announced that he is returning to Tampa Bay for a 23rd NFL season. But there is still one more domino to fall in all of this. On March 30th, Tampa Bay head coach Bruce Arians announced he was stepping down from his post and turning the team over to defensive coordinator Todd Bowles, a San Diego radio host named Rich Arensberger, who is close friends with Tampa Bay assistant A.Q. Shipley, reported that Brady was frustrated by Arians, who often took a, quote, red pen to the game plan that Brady had helped craft each week. And all of a sudden, Arians who had made no noises about quitting, abruptly stepped down in an extremely inconvenient time on the league calendar. It was just weeks before the NFL draft. On one hand, this all seems really, really far-fetched. On the other hand, it really makes perfect sense when you break it all down. It is the only logical explanation that has emerged to explain Tom Brady's 40-day long retirement and the whiplash return uh, 40, days, 40 days after retiring. It was crazy, but that does not make it any less bizarre. And joining us now is Ben Volan, senior NFL reporter for the Boston Globe, one of the reporters uh, who we mentioned who broke the recent news about Brady. Ben, thank you 
you so much for being here. Kudos to you for putting all of this together because there are so many steps to it. I was out there in Tampa uh, covering outside the stadium when Tom Brady retired. I also covered uh, the Brian Flores lawsuit. And at the time, it just seems no one realized that this was all connected. Yeah, this is definitely a story where truth is stranger than fiction. And um, you, you know, the story got reported in bits and pieces, but it, it never got told in its entirety. And when you, you put it all together, it is pretty mind blowing that Tom Brady was trying to orchestrate his way out of Tampa and look, the Bucks they controlled his rights as a quarterback. He was still under contract. So the only way for the Dolphins to be able to get him was to offer him a front office position and an ownership stake in the team. The Bucs don't control Tom Brady's rights if he wants to be, say, a team president. So Tom Brady and, and the Dolphins were really trying to backdoor this thing where first they would hire him as an executive. And then after the fact, after the Bucs had already moved on, they found another quarterback. The Dolphins could approach them and say, hey, why don't we just trade you a second round pick? Tom's already here. You moved on. Let's just move on from this thing. So they were really trying to, to backdoor it. And look, one thing we've learned about Tom Brady over the years is follow the real estate. Uh, in 2019, he put his Massachusetts home up for sale. Everyone here in New England said, la, 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 nothing to see here. And then sure enough, uh, a few months later, he was gone. He was out of New England, gone from the Patriots. This time, he, he's bought a $20 million mansion in Miami Beach. He purchased it just a month yeah. or two before all the wheels were in motion to bring him to the Dolphins. So, again, follow the real estate. Yeah, it's not, it's why the Miami Dolphins? Owner Stephen Ross is a big University of Michigan guy. He's got his name on the business school there. And Tom Brady, obviously, is the star alumnus from the University of Michigan. Stephen Ross, his team has been fairly irrelevant the last two decades. Fan attendance is down. Getting Brady would be a big splash, especially getting Sean Payton as his coach as well. It would be a huge move that would reverberate across the NFL, uh, and it would bring a lot of sizzle yeah, it, to, to the Dolphins and a lot of attention. So this was going to be the big move seems, that Stephen Ross was going to make to to get Tom Brady, steal him away from the Bucs, steal him away from the New England Patriots, and then the Brian Flores lawsuit just blew everything up. Yeah, it seems like it came very, very close to happening. One thing I was thinking about is when I covered the first, their initial retirement, um, you know, it was like this guy was a hero. The whole country was upset. When he announced he was coming back, it, it didn't really have that same kind of feeling. I mean, in the end, uh, what do you, I mean, where do you think Tom Brady stands now? You know, it, you're right. It didn't make much of a, a reverberation when he came back to the NFL because even when he retired, and as you noted before, he never actually used the R word in his announcement. But Almost from the jump, there were um, rumors and buzz that Brady was not really retired. He was going to come back. And I don't think anyone really took the retirement too seriously. This is a guy who forever has talked about playing until he's 45 years old and wanting to, you know, set the record books as far as longevity in the NFL and make us change the way we think about aging and athletes. And he's 44. He's going to be 45 now in August. So he's right there on the doorstep of accomplishing his goal. And he's still fantastic. He was number two in MVP voting. He led the NFL. He, yeah, I mean, let's, touchdowns last year. I, I he, think, yeah. I, sorry to interrupt you, Ben. We're running out of time, but yeah, I think he he is he still has a lot of fans. He, certainly, the shape he's in at his age is amazing. And what's also amazing is the way that you broke it down in that story because you went through the timeline. It, just so interesting to look at it now. Based, on, you know, I was covering it at the time and to see the way all the pieces came together. Uh, ben, thank you so much for your time tonight. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.